Hello there. What's going on everyone, my name is Wolfful77 and welcome back to another episode of the Spyro Battlefront 2 concept series. So, before we get straight into the video, I just want to let you guys know that I've got a new headset with a new microphone and I'm hoping it does sound better like compared to the previous videos, so just let me know how it sounds, although I've had a test already and it sounds really good, like a lot better than it usually would be. But anyways, um, so as you guys know at the end of the last concept, which we covered Flame and Ember, I mentioned that in this one we were going to cover uh, Nasty Nork and Ripto, who are the third and the fourth villains for the dark side. And then afterwards, I will let you guys know who will be the last two like launch concept heroes for the light side, being the fifth and the sixth one. And then same, of course, in that one, I will mention who the fifth and sixth for the dark side will be. So I think um, you guys know how it works pretty much, so I think we just get right into it. So we are going to start off with, of course, Nasty Nork. And um, of course, we'll start with the base description, which what I've got here is Nasty Nork isn't as a simple creature as others describe him as. He may look ugly and dumb, but his brute strength makes up for his motivation to take revenge on those who oppose and mock him. Carrying his staff into battle, Nasty will certainly show his enemies why they should fear him. So, as a general recap, Nasty Nork was the very first Spyro villain that ever existed back in 1998 in Spyro the Dragon. And, I mean, he didn't really pose as a threat at the start until he was being mocked by um, like a lot of the dragon elders in the artisan's world and then he turned all of them into stone and of course your objective in the first game was to free all the dragon elders and then fight Nasty Nork and get a bit of payback on him essentially. Um, so we'll get into the base health. So the base health I've got for Nasty Nork is going to be 750 because he is a pretty big character. So he's got to be able to have a lot of health. Not as much as Malifor, um, pretty much, because I think Malifor I had 800 for him, like Darth Vader sort of um, health in a way. Uh, and then for health regeneration, Nasty would of course have uh, 200 health regain if you don't have any specific star cards equipped to him. Then we get into the appearances. So uh, Nasty's default appearance is going to be called Warlord. So this is just going to be how he generally looks with his staff uh, and his helmet on and so forth. And then speaking of the helmet, the rare appearance that I have here for Nasty Nork is going to be called Helmetless. So this is, um, we only see him for a brief moment without the helmet on and that is in the very first cutscene of the game. Afterwards he does put it on so it's kind of like Iden Versio where she has a, um, a helmetless look as a rare appearance so that's all it is. And then in terms of attacks, the primary attack is going to be Staff Strike. So it's kind of like you're using a lightsaber in Battlefront 2, but um, he's going to be swinging it around like a mace. And I guess it could be a mix of like physical hits and a few spells coming out of the staff. And then the aim button is going to be um, blocking with his staff. So he'll be able to like shield himself for a bit against enemies but of course everyone has their stamina so it'll go down obviously uh then we're going to get into the abilities for nasty nork so the first ability i've got here is called brute strength so this is where nasty toughens up and becomes more berserk in battle giving him an increased damage output for a short time so all it is is a damage output increase i don't have anything else for it unless there is a certain star card I may have that could like give it another effect I'll have to check that because we're gonna get to that very shortly um, but then the second ability is called enchanted freeze so this is uh, using the power of his enchanted staff nasty raises it up and freezes enemies temporarily that are within range so it's gonna act like a 360 degree 
sort of ability and think of it as uh, Kylo's uh, solid freeze. Or, well, it's not solid freeze, that's the name of the star card. Just, it's the freeze ability, just think of that. But then, I don't know if they would be turned into dragon statues because that's what they were in the first game. Otherwise, they could just um, stay frozen, essentially. Uh, and then the final ability I've got here for Nasty is Impact Slam. So this is where Nasty slams his staff on the ground like a club, knocking enemies down in front of him. So essentially, this is what um, Anakin's passionate strike was before the knockdown effect was taken away. But of course, Nasty isn't a broken character like Anakin, so it's just going to be a massive slam on the ground and it's going to be in a certain radius in front so kind of like a similar radius to uh count dooku's um uh like the the lightning stun ability that he has and yeah so uh in terms of star cards for nasty nork the first star card i've got here is every time nasty nork deals a threshold of 200 damage uh, 200 combined damage with any ability, he gains 2% damage reduction to a maximum. This effect resets after Nasty Nork is defeated. So, <clears throat> essentially, if you were going for a kill streak with Nasty, it's going to become a little bit easier for you after, obviously, dealing, like, say, the 200 damage and so forth each time. But, obviously, it's not going to go to, like, infinite as i mentioned it's just to a limit it's exactly like in battlefront 2 um then the next card of course is nasty nork has increased maximum health and the final basic card is nasty nork has increased health regeneration now of course as we've mentioned in every single video every single hero has a um passive for health on kill so because that used to be a card originally but then um, obviously it changed and therefore we got the new cards and so forth um, now we're gonna get into the star cards for each of his abilities so the first two for brute strength being the duration of brute strength is longer and the second one is the damage uh, the damage output of brute strength is increased so you either can have it longer or you can just deal more damage it's up to you uh, then the next two cards are going to be for Enchanted Freeze. So the first one is the effect of Enchanted Freeze is longer when two or more enemies are affected. Now, this card could probably be three or more enemies instead, but it would be a big game changer. So if you get into a situation where you're surrounded by a big group of enemies, you could use your Enchanted Freeze. Uh, freeze them all and they'll be frozen for longer then you can leave your teammates to just wipe them out or you can do it yourself it's up to you uh, and then the um, the other one is the area of effect for enchanted freeze is larger um, so it's just bigger so it's kind of like um, think of it as Palpatine's like dark aura ability the one where it um like the star card you have equipped where it will increase in size the longer it's on it's it's not going to be like that like it will already be bigger otherwise actually yeah because it's a straight up ability like it's not a um an ability that goes for a duration except for when they're frozen if that makes sense uh but then the final two cards we're going to go over is for impact slam the first one being Impact Slam has a shorter cooldown, and the second one, the effect of Impact Slam is more powerful, dealing increased damage. Um, so yeah, that's really all I've got for uh, Nasty, pretty much. I couldn't really think of any other appearances, because I don't think I've seen Nasty with any other outfits. Um, but if you guys have any other suggestions, of course, let me know, and I can definitely address them in a future video. But now we're going to move on with the second villain of this concept, the fourth one overall for the dark side, and that is going to be Ripto. So Ripto was the second villain 
ever in the Spyro universe, obviously being in Spyro Ripto's Rage, which came out in 1999. Um, but yeah, so the base description I've got for Ripto is, Ripto once invaded the home world of Avalar and took over for the time being, wanting to eliminate all the dragons since he hates them so much. Too bad Spyro is in the way. Now Ripto's aim is to continue to finish Spyro and his companions off. Don't mock him for his height though, you may end up facing the might of his magical powers. So, yeah, he's one of the he's one of the shortest villains, but he's not the weakest. Like he is like a smart villain, but then he can get a little carried away sometimes. I mean, you guys would have obviously seen it if you did play like Ripto's Rage or uh, Enter the Dragonfly, because Ripto was in that and a couple of other games. Now, speaking of which, there is an appearance, I think, in Enter the Dragonfly that I do know of. I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to look it up, but like I said um, previously, I will look at doing a future video where I can cover um, additional appearances for each of the characters that could be added. But um, with that out of the way, we'll get into the base health. So Ripto is going to be at 650 health, which is what I've had here for a while. Now, I've had suggestions come in for, say, um, Ripto, and they all sound really good. Like, I really do think they suit him. Which, um, I can address those, as I mentioned again, in a future video, but obviously I'm going to go with what I've got here, what I, what I thought was the best for Ripto, essentially. So, with the base health of 650 health, his health regain, I would, I would still keep it at 200, essentially. Um, but then in terms of appearances, I've only got one appearance for Ripto, as I mentioned, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's got another one in Enter the Dragonfly that I've only just remembered till now. But the default appearance I got here is just called Tyrannical Sorcerer, so this is just his default look from um, Ripto's Rage. Kind of like a Reignited Trilogy sort of look, but if maybe you can mix it with the Legend of Spyro style, sort of. Type. I think I said Spiral. It's meant to be Spyro, not Spiral. Uh, but then we're going to get into the attacks. So his primary attack is going to be Scepter Strikes. So same thing as what Nasty had with his uh, staff, but um, you're just going to be us using the Scepter, but you're also going to maybe use a couple of spells in the mix of that. Uh, but then the aim button. Now, I was originally thinking of maybe blocking that probably would be ideal for ripto if it should be a block ability but i'll let you guys decide but what i've got here is energy blast so he'll be able to um like aim in as if you're using a a gun and fire some energy blasts you could be standing quite a distance away from people and then you could just be shooting so you with ripto you would have a mix of you could attack like front on or you could stand back a bit and try to get some range on your enemies but it's up to you if you guys think a block should be better for his aim button then just let me know it, it's up to you guys like it's your opinion but then of course I got my opinion also uh, but then we're gonna get into the abilities for Ripto so the first ability is gonna be called rapid fire so this is where Ripto begins to rapidly fire blasts of energy out of his scepter, dealing lots of damage in a short amount of time. So it's kind of like Han's sharpshooter ability, pretty much, or say the Capix, uh, the Capix Spy. I think it's is it? I think it's Capix. Yeah, Capix Spy. With um, I don't know the name of the ability, but it's the the same concept where you get like a rapid fire. Um, like shot. Um, so if you have like a big group of enemies, you could probably deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. As, as I mentioned, dealing lots of damage in a short amount of time. Uh, but then the second ability for Ripto is going to be personal protection. So this is where Ripto gives himself some protection from enemy attacks, therefore taking no damage for a short duration. So this is 
something completely different from what was in Battlefront 2. So, for a very, very short amount of time, as I mentioned, Ripto will take absolutely no damage from any enemies. So he will basically be invincible for a few seconds. Which could be both good and annoying at the same time. Depends on how you guys view it. Um, but this is essentially what I was saying in terms of like why I didn't choose to go with a block instead of... Um, instead, of course, I went with um, firing with his staff. Uh, but then we're going to get into the final ability for Ripto, and that is going to be called Emergence. So this is where, when close enough, Ripto can summon a portal that will take him right towards the enemy, taking them by surprise. So think of it as General Grievous' Thrust Surge. If you're close enough, you'll be able to point towards an enemy, and you'll just transport all the way to um, that enemy and just be like, Hey, it's me. <laughs> and then you can basically just deal damage without them knowing. Like, they'll be caught off guard, essentially. Um, but now we're going to get into the star cards for Ripto. So the first one is going to be... Ripto becomes more persistent with himself, giving him the motivation he needs to conquer his enemies, giving him a 2% increase damage output to a maximum for every enemy defeated or 200 damage dealt to enemies. So, it's like Luke Skywalker's card. I think I had this I had this with Spyro where he'll deal more damage for every 200 damage dealt or um, enemy hero defeated. Ripto's basically going to be the same in this case. Uh, but then the second card is Ripto's abilities have shorter cooldowns. And the third one is Ripto has increased health regeneration. So the shorter cooldowns card, I think, um, I don't think I've had that with anyone else yet but Ripto. So you could be pretty unstoppable if you say had that and maybe a specific card with personal protection. We'll see what happens. Um, but the um, first two cards for Rapid Fire... Uh, rapid Fire fires more energy blasts when being used. And the second one is the damage of Rapid Fire on enemy heroes is increased. So, this is kind of like... Well, that second one is kind of like um, Yoda, where he has one of his star cards where he can deal more damage to enemy villains. It's, li it's literally that. Um... But then, we're going to get into uh, the two cards for personal protection. The first one being Ripto's personal protection can take more damage from enemies. Which, to me, kind of sounds... Oh, so the way I had it was basically, you are invincible for a short time. Basically, if you're like, say, a droidica, you've got your shield, like, health bar. Basically, you will have that. It will go down, but then um, obviously once it's down, then the ability is uh, has ended and you'll be vulnerable again. So that's essentially what I've got for this card. And then of course, um, the personal protection has a longer active duration, as I said. And yeah, well, I mean, that's for the other card. And then the final two cards are going to be for Emergence. So the first one is the distance for Emergence can go further. So that means you can be further away from the enemy and still get to them. And the other one is Ripto can use Emergence twice in a row. But the cooldown is increased more. So I think to make this more balanced... The cooldown, like, the cooldown's got to be a lot longer for them to recharge. Because you're going to be able to have two. So it's like General Grievous using Thrust Surge twice, essentially. That's how OP, in some sense, would be. But I don't want to make this overpowered. So that's why the cooldown should be a lot longer for each, like, emergence recharge. Um, but then, in a way, it's kind of like you can get away from enemies a lot faster, because there could be, like, an enemy 
further away from another group of enemies that are going after you. And you could go for that one enemy and get away from everyone else. So that's going to be like a little getaway tactic, which kind of sounds like Grievous, of course. Uh, but then apart from that, that's all I've got for um, Nasty Nork and Ripto. So if you guys uh, did enjoy um, the concept, let me know below. And in the next video, we are going to be covering Hunter and Bianca for the light side, who are the last two launch heroes in that concept. So that should be a really good video to look forward to. Um, but as always, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, go and check out my other videos, be sure to leave a like on the video, and comment what your thoughts were. And if you haven't checked out the previous part yet where we covered Flame and Ember, the uh, link will be in the description and the title card will be up on the screen now for you guys to go and check out. Uh, but apart from that, that's all I've really got to say, so until next time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.